una edición más de Auto 060 aquí en, en Cristina Radio Network. Eh, como ya escucharon, bueno, yo soy Javier Moda y recuerden que nos pueden escuchar, nos pueden eh, estar aquí en Sirius XM Radio y ver toda la información que ponemos de este show en nuestra página de Facebook, facebook.com slash auto 060. Y bueno, tenemos una gran cantidad de informaciones, pero vamos a ir directamente, a, vamos a cambiar al inglés. So we're going to switch back to English now because we have Chris Sutton, Director of Automotive Research for uh, J.D. Power and Associates. How are you, Chris? Yeah, I'm doing fine. How are you this morning? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for having the time. I know you're very busy traveling all over the place. Um, but thank you for, take, for taking the time. So we want to talk to you this week about the, one of the, the recent, the most recent study from J.D. Power and Associates, which is very important because it's like the satisfaction, the, the customer satisfaction with the dealer service, which uh, for some people can be uh, very scary at the beginning, right? Like when they say, oh, I have to go to the dealer, I don't really want to do that. Absolutely, yeah, there can certainly be a little bit of a hesitancy around that. Yeah, and, and what do you think is that, I mean, uh, some people believe that the dealers will charge more than a regular mechanic, but I think nowadays with the modern cars, you really have to go to the dealer. They have like proprietary technology that only applies to certain brands, and so People really have to go to the dealers, right, nowadays? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, the combination. They have factory trained technicians, as you mentioned. The vehicles are certainly more uh, technologically advanced. And, uh, you know, based on our CSI study, Customer Service Index, we're finding that the gap between satisfaction with dealers and the aftermarket or independents, that that gap is widening. The customers are certainly right now much more satisfied with their experience at the dealerships. Yeah. And uh, based on the study, wh why is that? Uh, why, why are people finding a, a better experience at a dealership? I think it's a combination of certainly a superior amenities, uh, comfortable waiting areas, and at the same time, I think uh, dealers have uh, put emphasis on trying to streamline the processes, um, and they've improved that. Where that's been, you know, historically a gap between the uh, the independents and the dealers, and dealers have certainly made the made strides in that area. And again, you know, they're going to have uh, trained and uh, uh, trained uh, technicians and also uh, trained service advisors that, uh, that know the car's history and know the customer. I see. Uh, and based on the, re on the uh, results of, the, of this year's study, some uh, things that are not a surprise, like Lexus, Jaguar, kind of like, but then some others, like GMC. Uh, is that a, was that a surprise for, for you guys at J.D. Power and Associates? Well, it was a uh, certainly welcome surprise in that the GM brands have historically performed well in the CSI study. And this year, GMC won the mass market award for the first time. So, uh, again, the uh, the GM brands did particularly well uh, on, on the mass, within the mass market brands. GMC, Chevrolet, and Buick were three of the top four. And then Cadillac was in the top three on the luxury side. So, good performance all around by those brands. Yeah, and then the luxury side, uh, Lexus, which is the, I, I, I don't recall uh, the results from the past years, but uh, Lexus has been there for a long time, right? Lexus is one, this is the fifth year in a row that they've captured the CSI crown on the premium side. So they, you know, continue to really um, dedicate a lot of attention to the customer and really deliver on all, all aspects of and touch points of the customer experience. Yeah, and this particular study doesn't uh, necessarily reflect sales, right? Because I see Jaguar, which is not a high volume uh, a, a car seller here in the U.S. at least, uh, or but they are still uh, in the, on the top five for uh, luxury brands. Correct. This uh, this particular study uh, examines the customer experience with the service department only, and not the uh, not the sales experience. Okay. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, the methodology for for this study? How is done? How many people you talk to, and how 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 the results come up? How do you come up with these results? So the study is based on uh, original owners, and it's based on three years of ownership and service. Uh, we gather registration data, and we will send that to uh, survey customers. And based on that, we will record their three years of ownership experience. We ask them about their last service visit and measure satisfaction across five different areas, including service initiation, facility, service advisor, pickup, and service quality. Yeah. And then you compare these to people who go to the dealership and then go to independent uh, mechanics? or, or? We do. We, we compare both. So it includes the experience with the dealership, experience with the independent garages and also the uh the aftermarket chain as well yeah and so uh, that means that we were talking at the beginning about uh the dealership being uh, not only a bit scary 
but um, more expensive. What's the, what's your opinion on that, or what's that the study tell us about that? Well, you know, I think we're certainly finding that customers on average might pay a little bit more at the dealership, but, you know, based on the, that, the fairness of price paid is, is a component of the study, so we factor that in. And based yeah. on that, I think customers are indicating uh, that within that ownership here that they're willing to pay a little bit more for that experience. I see. And um, so the Americans uh, are, are coming back strong in that sense. I mean, they're coming back in many other ways, but uh, in, in this particular study of satisfaction of the consumer at the dealership, they're doing well. I mean, you said like GMC um, became the first the, for not the non-luxury brand, but uh, we also see Chevrolet in general and uh, Volkswagen. Um, it's also there, but uh, based on the, the the three big from Detroit, uh, I don't see Ford there. What what's going on there or Chrysler? Uh, Ford was at industry average on the on the mass market side, so right on par with industry. And Chrysler was also in that range as well. They had a nice improvement year year with the Chrysler brand. Yeah. So um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad, just like uh, the, 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 the industry itself has become very competitive in that aspect too, right? Because nowadays, I think all the manufacturers are focusing not only on the, of the fact that people buy their cars, but uh, the whole experience because they want repeat customers, and this is one of the things that uh, will probably enhance somebody to go back and buy from the same brand. So this is part oh. of their strategy, right? Absolutely, very much so. You know, so for in our study, it was that we had a 10 point increase year over year satisfaction increase versus prior year, which in our study is a, that's a significant gain and it uh, follows a couple of years in a row of increases. And well, based on data that we've analyzed and put together, the customer experience absolutely has a role in the customer's decision to either purchase or defect from a brand. So there's an absolute relationship between the customer service experience and brand loyalty, which is, you know, that's key, key information for the manufacturers. Yeah, that's, that's that's really good. Very interesting. We're talking to Chris Sutton, Director of Automotive Research of J.D. Power and Associate, talking about the 2013 Consumer Service Index, which actually, as he just mentioned, reflects the results from the three previous years. Um, the other brand that I mentioned, Mini uh, and Volkswagen, uh, two brands that are very different, uh, but uh, come up very good in this service. Mini is being part of is part of the BMW group, which they have a particular interesting thing that other manufacturers are doing too, like include like um, four year, three year uh, service uh, in included with the price of the car. That's something that people should look for, you think, uh, while buying a new car? You think it's a good factor? Well, I think it certainly provides customers some certainty about their next few years of service visits. And, you know, I think it takes a little bit of their guesswork out of, about uh, from how much they're going to be paying for at certain maintenance intervals. So from I think that standpoint, you have a customer, uh, you know, a bit of peace of mind. Uh, going forward, and uh, you know, as you mentioned, Mini has uh, historically been a very strong performer uh, on the mass market side within the study. And Volkswagen has made tremendous strides as well. Volkswagen was in the top five on the mass market side as well. Yeah, very interesting. Um, Chris, can you tell us, please, uh, where our audience can find more information about the study and some other things that JD Power and, and Associates do? Yes, absolutely. JDPower.com should be your source for information on the study, and as well as all of uh, other uh, our good services. Yeah, and uh, do you have a, finally a, a, a recommendation about what we started talking about? Why it's important, uh, and uh, maybe we're repeating ourselves a little bit, but I think it's it's it's, it's worth doing. Uh, why it's important to take especially new cars to a dealership, and at what point will you say like maybe the guarantee has expired? Is that a good point to start going to an independent mechanic? Well, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's really about the relationship that the dealership builds with their customer. So if, if that is to the customer's satisfaction and the customer feels that, you know, at the end of the day that their experience is being handled efficiently and they're having attention paid to them and it's a facility that they either uh, enjoy the experience with or there's ready access to a lot of vehicle, I wouldn't say that there's, you know, necessarily a point when they sh should consider defecting to a uh, to a uh, independent. So as long as those conditions are met, I, you know, I think that sets the tone for a pretty good long-term relationship. Okay. And uh, one final question: uh, Is there any uh, warning signs that people should take when when they go to a dealership? Because some some of the dealerships maybe why offer free Wi-Fi, water, coffee, but then you want you you're not going there for that. You're going there for ser to service your car. So are there any uh, warning signs that people should pay attention to? 
Well, you know, I don't know about warning signs, but certainly the, uh, you know, the importance of making a, um, I, I think the uh, CDC is really reviewing the factory recommended maintenance schedule and what's taking a look at what should be done within the, uh, within the materials that the manufacturer provides and ensure that that's in line with what the, the, what the dealership is recommending for you. And, uh, you know, I think it's uh, a lot of times we find the most satisfied customers are the ones that, that make an appointment, gives the dealership time to prepare for their visit as well. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, that was uh, Chris Sutton, Director of Automotive Research for J.D. Power & Associates, talking about the 2013 Consumer Service Index Report. Um, I know you are very busy, so I really thank you for taking the time to talk with us. And uh, we're going to post all the information on our website, too, so it will be available for our audience. Super. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Chris. Have okay, a good night. Bye. Hey, you too. Take care. Bueno, ahí teníamos a Chris Sutton, eh, director de investigación del de sector automotriz para J.D. Power and Associates. J.D. Power and Associates es una firma de consultoría que analiza las diversas industrias, no solo la industria automotriz, en diferentes aspectos. Y este, eh, para esta ocasión eh, se trataba, como estábamos mencionando en la entrevista, el eh, índice de satisfacción de los consumidores cuando llevan el vehículo al eh, dealership, al concesionario para los servicios y bueno, ahí no, no entramos en gran detalle porque el, el estudio es bastante amplio, pero por ejemplo, la diferencia de precio por visita entre un eh, taller del, 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 del fabricante de auto, el concesionario, es de 118 dólares el promedio de gasto por visita contra 44 en un taller mecánico independiente. Pero bueno, a largo plazo eh, la inversión cuenta mucho porque, eh, francamente, como decíamos, con los autos modernos hay que tener mucho cuidado y... Hay que mantener lo mejor posible porque no solamente dan el servicio al momento, sino que a largo plazo eh, mantienen eh, su valor. Y hablando de eso, vamos en el segundo segmento a hablar con uh, Jeff, um, John Kraftschick, el presidente de la Hyundai, hablando del valor residual de los nuevos Hyundai. Vamos a hablar con uh, eh, del nuevo Chevy Impala y muchas cosas más aquí en Auto 060. Yo soy Javier Mota, no se vayan que seguimos en los siguientes segmentos. También vamos a tener los nuevos Top Safety Picks. Eh, para el 2013. Yo soy Javier Mota, no se vayan, regresamos en Auto 060.